Welcome everybody, my name is Christina Wallace and I am your lab instructor for the first term of Human Anatomy and Physiology class at Clackamas Community College. Um, here, over here, you can see uh, our class number is Biology 231L. The L indicates the lab portion as opposed to your lecture portion, which would just be a plane by 231. This first uh, video for your lab reports um, is about exercises 6 and 7, the second lab report that you have to do, about tissue, skin, and membranes. And I want you all to know this is a combined lab, so don't freak out that it's really, really giant. <laughs> it's two weeks of lab crammed into one week um, because we, are, we postponed a week for the wildfires. So I know it's a lot of material coming at you all of a sudden. We're gonna walk through it step by step. So this is the lab report you should be looking at, Tissue, Skin, and Membranes Online Combined Lab. Um, this also has a set of online instructions that go with it. I recommend that you print out this lab so that you can write on it while you are watching my video or while you are studying, um, just for your own, um, just for your own use, because I know you're going to turn in an electronic copy to me. This page are the lab instructions for Biology 231 uh, lab. This sheet, while it has a lot of information on it, it also has links and things that you'll be able to click on to go look at images. All of the images I have put into my YouTube video. So uh, you'll see them there too. So this one you might wanna leave online so that you can click you know, um, over to links when you, when you wanna check stuff out. All right, so let's get started. Um, this lab is basically an introduction to the uh, four main tissue categories of the body. Um, and then it's going to run through each of those tissue categories and show you examples, specific examples of each. And so there's lots of histology pictures today of different kinds of tissues that you're going to have to tell apart from one another. Um, one thing I really, really suggest is that you write down the page numbers um, in your lab manual, which is the spiral bound lab manual, as you are studying. Because then if you uh, miss something or get confused, you know exactly right uh, where to go to check your answers. As I go through your lab, sometimes I will not uh, write down um, where I found information. And so these are the abbreviations I will use. Um, lab manual for uh, Oh, don't want to do that. Lab manual for that spiral bound lab manual, um, textbook, TB for textbook, and LN for your lecture notes. And then I will usually tell you what section. So we're going to look at the tissues section of your lecture notes to find some information about our lab today. All right, so let's start with the four major tissue uh, categories of the human body. Uh, we have a nice graphic here that I've taken from histologyguide.com, which is where most of the links to histology pictures are from your lab, online lab instructions. So we have examples of nervous tissue, muscle tissue and the types, um, epithelial tissue, and connective tissue. And each of these kind of give you a, a, a bit of a hint about the different, different ways these tissues look um, based on what their job is and where they are. And so I want to remind us all that we are basically a donut, right? This is our body. Our body is here. Right, And then in the middle, we have this open tube running through us from mouth to anus that is basically exposed to the um, exterior world. And so um, that will be important to remember. That doesn't look like a very good D body. <laughs> um, it'll be important to remember when we look at um, epithelial tissues, especially because these are the ones that are um, open to the exterior like this space in here. This space in here is actually the middle of your intestine where your food goes. And so the tissue that lines that space is gonna be an epithelium. And it's also the tissue that is on the outside of our body for our skin. Every single 
bit of us are made of these four types of tissues. These are like the mother tissues, like mother sauces in French cooking. So the first tissue that your lab report talks about is epithelial tissue. And so remember, this makes up our skin and it makes up the lining of our esophagus and the lining of all of our intestines and stuff. Um, the lining of any duct in your body, uh, the lining of your blood vessels, the lining of your heart, <laughs> all of these things that are exposed to that uh, open space where blood would flow or food would pass are epithelial tissues. And they're categorized um, or classified in a couple of ways. Um, the, by shape and by number of layers. That's how the tissues get their names. And so on this page, I've kind of, this is also from histologyguide.com. I have um, just made it easy to kind of tell you have squamous cells, which are flat. You have cuboidal cells, which are, are square with a nucleus kind of in the middle. And then you have columnar cells that are more of a rectangle shape. And these will either be in a single layer of cells or they're going to be stratified and that means there's going to be multiple cells of the same type layered upon on top of one another and then there's also this other tissue we're going to look at um, uh, called pseudostratified columnar and i'll give you a little bit more information about that when we get to it um, and you can contrast it kind of with this stratified columnar down here which you hardly ever see in the body so these things that i've x'd out don't worry about them only pay attention to the other ones all right, so the first thing we look at, um, I just want to draw your attention about epithelial tissue. So here I am showing you where I've put a page number kind of with my little abbreviations. And I want to draw your attention to the idea of five distinguishing characteristics. So a distinguishing characteristic is different than a function. A distinguishing characteristic is the, the way that you define an epithelial tissue as compared to a nervous tissue. How do I know that epithelial tissue is what it is? Because it has these defining characteristics about it. And so, um, and those are all spelled out in your lab manual beautifully. Okay, just a word about um, planes. So the first lab you learned about the different body planes, like the sagittal plane that would cut me in half right to left, or the coronal plane that would cut me in half from front to back, or the transverse plane that would cut me in half like a magician cuts the lady in half in a box. So this page is just kind of explaining to you what you see on a slide with these on these different planes. And so I just wanna draw your attention to um, a couple of views. And so this view right here, this is a longitudinal section. And so it's kind of like taking a garden hose and cutting it down the length and looking at the half pipe of one side. And then over here, we have a cross section. And so that's like cutting the garden hose directly in half and being able to look at the circle surface that you cut. All right, so for microscopic examination, I really think it's useful to draw simple, um, like cartoon drawings of these tissues just to um, make sure you understand the shape of the cells and where the um, apical and basal surfaces are. Um, I think it's good to make your hand do the work um, or somehow make yourself a kind of a PDF of pictures or uh, download the PDF that I'm going to put up of my slides and cut them out and look, make them flashcards. I don't know. You're just going to be able to have to tell these tissues apart from one another. And so here are the five tissues, uh, epithelial tissues that you need to know. So you have three simple tissues, which means a single layer, and two kind of layered tissues where there's more than one cell on top of each other, or it looks like there is. All right, so simple epithelial tissues. They have a single layer of cells. You're gonna see three shapes of it. You're gonna see squamous cells that have a flat shape, um, and the arrows are kind of pointing at these cells, kind of right up here and right here. Um, and they're lining, they're kind of lining this open white space that's right in here. This white space is the apical side of the membrane of the epithelial tissue. And then the basal membrane is, um, is back here. There's a B for basal. 
Um, cuboidal cells are a square shape and they have the nucleus kind of in the middle. And so here we can see a lovely little tube. Right here I'm outlining a little tube. And it's made of all of these little cuboidal cells. You see them? And the apical surface will be that lumen in the middle where liquid would flow. And the basal surface is kind of the back side of the tube. And then columnar cells are more rectangular. And they have their nucleus um, kind of closer to the basal side and uh, more cytoplasm um, on the apical side of the cell. And so here are little columnar cells, columnar, columnar cells with their little nucleus hanging out towards the back of the membrane. The next um, kind of tissue that we'll see is a stratified tissue, which means there's multiple layers of cells on top. And so this slide is all about stratified squamous epithelium. And so this is what we see in our skin. And if you can see, there's kind of, here's our basal surface. And then there's like a layer and a layer and a layer and a layer. And then there's all this kind of funky waxy stuff at the top. That means stratified, similar types of epithelial cells layered on top of each other. That's what makes up our skin. Then we have our one unique tissue called pseudostratified. So what does pseudo mean? It means fake. And so this is kind of like fake stratified epithelium. And we find this, this is very common in the trachea and in the reproductive tract. And so here we can see the, the basal surface of our epithelial membrane. And then we have these cells and they looked stacked, but they're really that honestly they're really not. It's kind of like there's a cell that goes up to the top and then this one is kind of short and then this one is kind of next to it and you know so it kind of works like that. You know there's a cell kind of goes all the way down. Um, pseudo stratified, fake stratified. Um, I describe it here as like a tropical forest. All of the trees have roots in the ground, but they don't all reach the apical surface or the top of the canopy. And here in the lab instructions are all of the links to those slides. And I literally clicked on these links and took pictures of the tissues I found and put them into my slideshow. Okay, so we finished, um, we've looked at epithelial tissues and now we're moving on to our next class of, uh, or our main class of tissues, connective tissue. So connective tissues uh, have the most variety of any um, major class of tissue in the body, and uh, they're called connective tissues because they, oops, sorry, because they connect things. They connect one area of the body of another, they connect one structure to another, they help uh, provide structural integrity to organs and stuff. So lots of varieties of connective tissue. The one really important thing I want you to know about connective tissues is that they are living cells, or they consist of living cells in a non-living matrix. And so live cells are going to be floating around and hanging out in stuff that is not alive. So for example, Blood is a connective tissue. It has live red blood cells and they float around in your plasma. Your plasma is not alive. Um, it doesn't have cells that make it up. It's glycoproteins and polysaccharides and water. So proteins, sugars, and water is what makes up your plasma. Bone is also a connective tissue. You know, think of that song, you know, your knee bone connects to your thigh bone. It's a connective tissue. Um, it has live cells that make up the bone. You know, you're rebuilding bone all the time. Um, and they, they have to live in the non-living matrix uh, of the hard calcium salts and collagen fibers of your bones. So this poses a question. It's easy to understand how a red blood cell or urethrocyte could live in the plasma. It's floating around, it's liquid, it's easy. But how does a living cell live in the hard 
out, knocking on my table the hard surface of your bones? Let's take a look. The answer is that they are going to live in a special little lagoon or a little cavity where they're happy and content and they've carved out a little cave for themselves. And so the cavity where the cells live in a solid surface, if your bones are solid, they have to live somewhere, right, is called a lacuna or a plural lacuni. And it's just a little cavity in a tissue where a living cell resides. And we'll see that when we look at the histology image. Because connective tissue comes in so many forms, there's kind of like two main, or there's kind of a, a, a four main groups or classes of, of connective tissue. And so the first one that you'll learn has these multiple forms in, in it, and it is uh, connective, whoops, sorry, pen, connective tissue proper. And so connective tissue proper consists of uh, loose areolar connective tissue, dense, con uh, dense, re or dense regular connective tissue, dense irregular connective tissue, and adipose tissue. All of those are flavors of or subgroups of connective tissue proper. See if you can figure out what the three other classes of uh, connective tissue we're studying. So here we are back at your lab report, and so we've kind of defined um, the lacuni and we've talked about the general characteristics and the matrix, what it's made out of. And now let's look at some um, histology pictures of these tissues. And it's really just tell one kind apart from another. That's all you really have to do. And if you honestly can come up with two bullet points that describe a tissue in, and define it away from other tissues, honestly, you are well on your way to success in this class if you can pick up two bullet points pretty much about every, every ver, uh, noun in your lab report. So let's look at connective tissue proper first. And let's start with loose connective tissue or areolar connective tissue. And then we also will look at adipose tissue, which is your fat. All right, here is some loose areolar connective tissue. You can also see this um, in your lab manual on page 72. There's a good like diagram of it. And then page 74 has another histology picture that you can compare to the one from histologyguide.com. Um, it has, it's kind of this, you know, there's a bunch of like matrix in the background and then there are thick like bubblegum pink fibers. And then there are stringy fibers in here like this, like the thin little strings. And then there are um, cell nuclei. So all these little cell nuclei are hanging out. That, it's just chaotic. It has fibers and strings and cell nuclei, and that's really your tell for loose areolar connective tissue. Adipose tissue, on the other hand, is a little bit more organized and has a lot more open space in it. Adipose tissue, let me get a good color here. Um, I'll do blue. Adipose tissue, um, here's all outline a nice adipose cell for us. So right here, here's a nice little adipose cell with its peripheral or nuclei kind of pushed to the side. Um, you know, here's another little adipose cell with a sideways nucleus and another little adipose cell with its nucleus pushed to the side. The space in the middle, like this space um, right here is empty because when they make the slides, the um, the triglycerides inside of the cell evaporate. And so all we're left with is this shell of a cell on the outside and the nucleus kind of pushed to the corner. That's adipose. So see if you see a bunch of open spaces and a little bit of hexagonal kind of appearance with the little dark nuclei pushed to the side, that's your tell for adipose tissue. So on each of these drawings, or on, on your lab report where you're looking at the histology pictures, it asks you to identify a couple of stuff. So name and label the cell type 
and the nuclei for a specific tissue. And so a cell type, remember, it's living cells in a non-living matrix. So our cell type is going to be some word with an ending of site on it. And so for adipose tissue, the cells that are unique to adipose tissue are adipocytes. adipocytes. And so that's gonna, that pattern is going to um, follow through all of these tissues. So the next tissues that we're going to look at are dense connective tissue. Um, dense connective tissue are things like your tendons and your ligaments. And then um, also the tissue that makes up the dermis of your skin is a dense connective tissue. Um, and I'll go to the slides and we'll take a look at those. All right, so here we have some classic examples of dense, regular connective tissue. In this sense, regular means kind of parallel fibers. And so you can kind of see these fibers are parallel and they get a little wavy. You can kind of see the wavy appearance up here, but they're all going the same direction. They're not crossing each other. And so that means if you pull it, like this way and this way, it's very, very strong. But if you pulled it this way and this way, it would tend to tear. Um, and so that's how we can tear a ligament pretty easily. If we pull it, if we pull those parallel fibers apart. And so it's characterized by, um, you know, it doesn't have a whole lot of nuclei in it. And so each of these little tiny, um, slashes. These are nuclei. These are also nuclei of dense regular connective tissue. Um, and so this, this is what connects our muscles to our bones. And so right here you can see this is dense regular connective tissue, but on the other side of my black line this is muscle. And they look a little bit alike and you'll oftentimes see them together and so you really have to make sure you can tell it apart but the thing that sets it apart is skeletal muscle has striations and so that's all these tiny little hash marks that are going across the fibers do you see them that kind of like texture that's not visible on the other side. Dense regular connective tissue over here, it doesn't have any of those little slashes. So those striations are your tell for skeletal muscle and how you would tell these two tissues apart. Um, dense connective tissue uh, is generally made of big collagen fibers. That's the main type of fiber that you would see in, in this tissue type. Now, it's not specifically on your lab report, but I want to talk a little bit about DICT, or dense irregular connective tissue. And so I, again, highlight it's not in your lab report, um, but I think it's a really good uh, c contrast. So this is dense irregular connective tissue, these two pictures, and you can kind of see let me get a better color so you can really contrast. You can kind of see that the fibers kind of go all different directions and they cross each other and it's kind of like a little web of fibers, you know, all these fibers kind of crossing like that. And so it's really strong um, when you pull it from any direction. You can pull it this way, or you can pull it this way, or this way, and this way. All from any direction, this tissue is going to be strong. It also has some really unique kind of open spaces in it. Do you see these open spaces? And so this type of tissue is really good for letting blood vessels pass through it, or glands living in it, or nerves passing through it. And so the dense irregular connective tissue of an organ is often the place, it's kind of like the highway where things run through, and it provides a lot of structural integrity. So just um, know that um, Dense irregular connective tissue and dense regular connective tissue kind of go together. They're just not asking you specifically about both kinds on your lab, but I like to point it out. And so on your lab report here, I've just kind of done a really simple um, cartoony drawing that tells those two kinds apart. So uh, dense regular connective tissue here 
would be kind of parallel and wavy. And then dense irregular connective tissue, the fibers go in all directions and it's strong when pulled from any direction. So I think little cartoon drawings like this are very, very useful for studying. And because these tissues are made of fibers, um, the fibroblasts are going to be very common inside of them. Blasts are cells that build fibers. Um, fibrocytes kind of are mature and maintain the matrix and stuff. All right, so now we are going to leave that connective tissue proper category and look at some other forms of connective tissue. And the first one we're going to look at is cartilage. And there are three types of cartilage that you're going to have to identify. Cartilage is so dang pretty, too. Anyway, here are three types of cartilage. And um, cartilage is a solid substance, so the matrix of cartilage tends to be kind of more like a gel, like a solid gel. You've all seen cartilage. You've bitten into it if you're, if you're not a vegetarian. Occasionally, it's kind of hard and crunchy. Um, so it has to have those lacunae inside of it for the cells to live in because they can't live literally in the solid... Um, matrix, they have to carve out a little cavity for themselves. And so here we see the lovely little lacunae. So here's a little set of lacunae. Um, lacunae in hyaline cartilage. So first off, let's look at hyaline cartilage. That's the first flavor. And this is the most common type of cartilage in your body. It's also the prettiest, in my opinion. Um, so it has this kind of, let me get a good color. No, not, not white. I want green. So this kind of all of this purple area that's just beautiful and glassy, all of this stuff, this is matrix, right? And then you're going to have these areas of cells. And so here's a little lacunae with a cell inside. And here's a set of paired lacunae with cells inside. And so this is the little lagoon, and then sometimes we can see the cell in the lagoon, right? So the lagoon, the space is the lacuna, and the cell is the something site, remember? So it's gonna be a word that's, that ends with site, because that means cell, and the prefix for cartilage, um, see if you can find it in your lab book. So we learned adipocytes was for adipose tissue. So what kind of site does cartilage have? And every type of cartilage is going to have the same type of cell that makes it. The second type of cartilage that you're going to learn is elastic cartilage. And this is what's found in our ears and uh, uh, the epiglottis that covers our trachea when we swallow food and liquid. Um, and it's unique because it has elastic fibers running through the matrix. So while the hyaline cartilage, the matrix was all glassy and smooth, like this beautiful, glassy, smooth, purple stuff, the, um, there we go, the elastic cartilage has these, don't, get, go away, go away, little, um, the elastic cartilage, it does have lacunae, so you can kind of see the little lagoons the little cavities with the dots in them, those are the lacunae with the cells in it. And then all these red fibers running through the matrix, those are elastic fibers. The third type of cartilage is fibrocartilage. And this is what's found like in the discs, our intervertebral discs between our uh, vertebrae. Um, and it is unique because the lacunae with the cartilage cells, find that name, find that site name, are kind of line up in, lined up in rows. And so you can kind of see like it kind of goes in a row, like these little chondrocytes are kind of in a row. And so it's like layers of lacunae with chondrocytes in them with um, a bunch of collagen fibers in between. So this space is collagen fibers kind of in between the rows of cartilage. So that's the third type of cartilage. And they look really different, so all you have to do is just kind of find a way to um, connect the picture to the name. Elastic cartilage has elastic fibers in it. I think that one's pretty easy. Fibro cartilage, I don't know. I don't know. Hyaline cartilage, I mean, when I don't know, if somebody's high on psychedelics, that, that's a pretty, this is a pretty uh, psychedelic looking tissue, this purple thing with the white polka dots in it. 
So that's that's kind of a I like to put connections to the name and a, a picture. So find a way to kind of hook the name to each picture type. And that's cartilage. So the next tissue we're going to look at from our lab report is um, bone or osseous tissue is another name for bone. This is what bone looks like, and it's very common um, in this kind of gray or gray-brown or old sepia-looking tone um, because it doesn't have live collagen in it to stain. Um, sometimes we'll see bone in that pink-purple color scheme, but for our purposes today, you can expect to see bone in this gray or brown color scheme. And so remember, bone is a solid, and so we're going to have to carve out the little cavity for the live cells to live in. So I've labeled a couple of uh, lacunae here. So I labeled the lacuni and the lacuni, you know, the little, the little kind of, you know, eyes with eyelashes looking things. Like there's one right there that looks kind of like an eye with eyelashes. All of these little dark dots are lacuni with cells living in it. And then the space in between here, all this stuff is the matrix. And so what kind of a site would live in osseous tissue? The um, last connective tissue we're going to look at is blood. And it's pretty indicative of a connective tissue. It connects literally every inch of your body from your toe to the top of your head. So that's kind of cool. And so remember, we have to look at blood and then we're going to identify, we're going to identify the three kinds of blood cells that we see in a blood sample. So let's take a look at that. And so when you click the link to blood, this is the picture you get. And so um, red blood cells, you know, the urethrocytes, we've seen on, on that name on another slide already. Um, that's the things that carry oxygen around your body. There's millions and millions of them, about five million. Um, and so that's all the little red polka dots we see. And then we also, what other kind of cells live in your blood? Like what type of cell or what category of cell um, increases when you have an infection or allergies or are fighting off a virus or cancer? Um, think about that. And then think about the type of site that um, clots your blood if you cut yourself. All right, so we are finished with connective tissue. Now we're gonna move on to those three types of muscle tissue that you find in your body. Um, check out the, the, your lab manual does a great job of describing these. I think the muscle starts on page 81. Let's take a look at some muscle tissue. Couple things to remember when you're trying to identify muscle tissue. There's gonna be, remember, a couple bullet points about each type that distinguishes it from the other kinds. And so you're going to be looking for if your tissue is has one nucleus per cell or many nuclei per cell, and if it has those funky striations that we saw when we compared it to dense regular connective tissue, or if it doesn't have any striations. And think about the type of muscle that has striations versus the kind that doesn't. What kind of jobs are they doing? What, um, you know, there's something different about their function that is important to know. All right, so when you go back through your lab, online lab instructions, and click on the links to look at the muscle tissue, you'll come up to pictures like this. And so I have three types of muscle tissue on this slide. I've told you um, where to find information. So just kind of pay attention to the description in those little boxes on page 81, because that's where it tells you kind of the bullet points you want to know that how to distinguish one type from another. And so remember that Skeletal muscle has these little striations in it, has long parallel fibers. And then if you look at the nuclei here, like this whole thing, this whole thing right here is a muscle cell. A muscle fiber equals a muscle cell, right? And so if this whole thing is one cell, how many nuclei do we see here? One, two, three, four, five, right? So 
draw some conclusions about how many nuclei skeletal muscle has. Um, and then, so long parallel fibers, it has the striations. Um, cardiac muscle is kind of branchy, and so it has this more like branchy appearance right here it branches and right here it branches and right here it branches so that's a big tell for cardiac muscle and it also if you zoom in you can kind of see it's going to have some little striations in it you have to zoom in pretty pretty far sometimes to see the striations or that that perpendicular liney structure in the skeletal muscle and you'll learn more about what those striations are and what their function is in your lecture class then smooth muscle smooth muscle is down here in the corner and I have outlined some individual cells for you so right here I've outlined an individual cell and they have kind of a fusiform or a spindle shape and so all of these little things that look like fishies are individual smooth muscle cells. Smooth muscle has no striations. So take a look through those pictures and see if you can answer all of those questions about muscle tissue. Clear. And the very last tissue we're gonna look at is nervous tissue. So when you click on the link in your online instructions, it will take you to this picture. But I want you to look at your lab manual, page 80, because that's where your description is and where it will kind of help you through the vocabulary and stuff and kind of compare what that picture looks like compared to this one here and see if you can kind of draw, you know, kind of figure out what all of these um, vocabulary pieces are from looking at those two pictures. All right, so we have totally completed exercise six, all about the different types of tissues in the body. And now we're gonna look specifically at the skin, which is um, a, a mucosa, which is an epithelial membrane system. It's one of your epithelial membranes. All right, so you're gonna start off thinking about what does our skin do for us? How does it protect us? And you can find some of those answers in your lab manual on page 89. And so just for reference, here we are in our lab instructions. And this is kind of where we start on exercise seven about the skin. And then you have a whole bunch of links. You know, I, I went to these exact same links to look at, um, Images. I didn't go to everything, so check this one out, check this one out, check this one out. So I think your lab book does a really great job of explaining the regions and the layers and the functions of the skin. So use your resources um, to find information about this. And so I just want to, you know, one quick little tour. You know, we're looking at skin. We can't see if we go down farther this direction, we'll come up with, you know, some adipose tissue with its little dark nuclei on the side. If we go all the way down to the hypodermis, we we would see adipose tissue down deep. And then we have some, I pointed out some dense irregular connective tissue. That's the one we just learned. And then up here, we have that stratified squamous epithelium. All right, so it asks you about regions. It asks you about some layers. We're going to go into the layers of the um, epidermis here in a second, and then a little more depth, and the dermis. Um, it's also um, asking you about the different kinds of cells, remember, or sites that you find in the skin. So a couple different kinds of sites here. That's you can all find in your lab manual, page 90 to 91. Does a great job of explaining. I think it's useful to, when you're looking at your lab manual, don't highlight everything, but highlight the vocabulary that you have to find in your lab reports um, is, is pretty useful. It continues on, and so now we are looking specifically at the um, layers of the epidermis, and so there's five of them, and your lab book again does a great job, page 91, 92, talks you through all of that stuff. I'm going to let you guys work on that on your own. 
And the next thing that it asks about is appendages of the skin. So your fingernails are an appendage. All of your hair follicles are appendages. Your sweat glands and your uh, sebaceous glands that make your hair oily, those are all appendages of the skin. And a lot of those things are going to live in that web net-like dense irregular connective tissue. The one with all the spaces and that's strong when pulled in all directions. That's where a lot of these structures are going to originate from. And I want to point out just quickly one of my more favorite terms in anatomy, an erector pili. So look in your lab book and try to figure out what erector pili is. It has to do with uh, when you um, go through a haunted house and you get goosebumps or your hairs raise on your neck because you heard something scary behind you. It's going to have something to do with that. So here we are looking at the kind of layers of the skin. Oops, got to leave my page where it was so you can, my drawing makes sense. And again, I've just kind of drawn an example of a simple cartoony drawing that will capture all of the layers of the skin. And so, um, let me get the color. So, you know, you can kind of see that, oops, sorry, turn my pen back on. So this stuff is going to be kind of right there. And then, Papillary region, a, a papilla, this word right here, a papilla equals a finger-like or nipple-like projection. And so we'll see that in other structures as we go through learning anatomy. But I just want to make you or draw your attention to, I'm going to put a little yellow dot by papilla. So a papilla is this tiny little area that kind of sticks up right here. These little kind of sticky uppy areas, those are papilla. And so that should help you identify the papillary region from your book. Um, and then, um, you know, try to figure out where I have all of these things here. So, whoops, dang it. Not what I wanted. Going back here. There we go. Got to put it on pen. So adipose tissue. Remember what adipose tissue looked like? Those little hexagons with kind of hollow centers and the nuclei pushed to the side. So where might that be in the whole scheme of the layers of the skin? And then where is that dense irregular connective tissue that uh, kind of serves as the big thick base of our skin? Um, so I'll, again, I just kind of wanted to show you an example of how little cartoony drawings can give you a lot of information. So don't worry about your artistic abilities and stuff, just little simple cartoony drawings. I swear if we could play Anatomy Pictionary um, and you could draw things, you had like 30 seconds to a minute to draw something and your partner had to pick the tissue. If you can do that, you are well on your way to being able to tell these tissues apart from one another. The last thing we're going to look at in the skin are some of those accessory organs or accessory structures um, we're going to look at a hair follicle. So these are a couple pictures of hair follicles from histologyguide.com. And so just kind of be aware, like I want you to look in your lab book on page 93 and try to um, find all of these bits of vocabulary um, between these pictures that I'm offering you here and the pictures and diagrams from your book. So I'll point out a couple of things because they are neato. This funky looking structure right here, this big marshmallowy thing and this big marshmallowy thing and this big marshmallowy looking thing, those are sebaceous glands and they're just really cool and you'd see them right next to a hair follicle because they put their oil into the space of the hair follicle and it comes out. So they drop their oil into the hair follicle and it comes out, there's your hair right there, and it comes out to the surface of your skin. So I just think that the sebaceous glands are cool looking. So I want you to try to find um, the hair follicle, the bulb of the hair, which is literally the live part, then the root shaft, and uh, try to figure out what erector pili is. 
There are a bunch of links and stuff in your online instructions that will take you to cool pictures and stuff. And okay, you have come to the end of your lab. The very last thing that you need to familiarize yourself with are body membranes. And so there's not really a lot of information in your book, um, but uh, the, the place I want you to look for this stuff is in your lecture notes. So the tissues chapter of your lecture notes, look at page 15, and that should help you understand, um, or help, that's where you'll find information about uh, membrane systems. And so here we are at your online instructions. We're at the very bottom of the page, and this is where we start talking about membranes. And there is an image of, oh, sorry, an image of a trachea. Um, that's a mucous membrane, and then the small intestine also has a mucous membrane in it. And so I'm going to show you those two pictures now. Okay, last slide. So a mucosa, you're going to see the word mucosa right here, um, come up in your notes and stuff. And so a mucosa is like a layer that has some uh, multi-tissues in it, more than one kind of tissue inside of it, and it does a function. And so um, it's going to be, it's going to have an epithelium on one side and connective tissue on the base. So an epithelium at the apical surface and a connective tissue base layer. And so I've given you two pictures here. So um, this is a trachea, and then this is the mucous membrane of the trachea. And so there's going to be the, the connective tissue basement layer, right? And then you're going to have the epithelium right there. And so that's going to be the same thing with the small intestine. So this picture on the right is the small intestine. And so this is your epithelium. And then your basement layer, it's a little harder to see here, but it's kind of in there. This is your basement base layer, right? And those two things form a structure. There's also these kind of like funky cells right here that look kind of like a little wine glass. Those are goblet cells, and they are just kind of studded in amongst the rectangular columnar cells, right? So there's a rectangular columnar cell right next to it. And then I'm going to fo follow or fill in the goblet cell. This little goblet cell just is, makes extra mucus, and it just hangs out. And so we have one right here as well. There's a goblet cell right there in our trachea tissue. So check out your lecture notes on page 15. I made a little note right up here. Um, and then that should be able to answer the whole rest of the questions for your lab. And I know this is long, but it covers two labs. So I promise most videos will try to be under 30 minutes. Thank you, everybody. Happy studying to you.